Hello and welcome to MB Tech. Sorry it's been so long since I've done my last video. I've done a lot of changes. I've done a lot of different things within my, I guess, basement studio, if you want to call it that. Um, added some different cameras. Um, been doing some 3D printing. Uh, doing all sorts of stuff uh, with Linux as well. Also rebuilt my virtual uh, home lab, if you will, um, with PVE as well as uh, FreeNAS for storage. Um, so a lot of that stuff will be coming in the future. But I just wanted to give you a... a background on why it's been so long and I do apologize but I'll be starting to make more videos more often um, so enough of that let's get into the, what we're gonna be doing this time hope this piques your interest a little bit but what we're gonna be doing is actually downloading and installing an Amazon Linux 2 uh, ISO if you will or version from Amazon and actually downloading it and setting it up on your on-prem or your uh, Proxmox uh, server um, so let's start there um, I'll give these links in to the uh, description as well. Basically, it's the running Amazon Linux 2 as a virtual machine on premise. Um, but there are some different things that you're going to need to do uh, within uh, Proxmox to make this work. Nothing too major, but I was able to get it to work, and I thought you guys might need would like that information as well. Uh, that's why I'm posting this video. Uh, so first off, when you log into our Proxmox box, okay, first thing you want to do is uh, change directory into temp. That's where I'm, I'm doing this. Uh, for my install, you can do it pretty much anywhere. You can do it at home if you wanted to. Uh, we're going to actually uh, follow the instructions here for uh, Amazon. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, step one is preparing the seed ISO. Uh, instead of calling it seed, I actually called it uh, uh, Amazon.ISO. Uh, so we're going to need to create a folder called seed. I'm going to change directories into that. And then in here, you're going to create two files, metadata and user data. Uh, I will cat out these here and I'll also put it in the uh, description. I do plan on updating my website so that you'll have the website as well to go through these same steps uh, for this as well. So let me cat out the metadata. Um, as you can see, pretty basic, just your network interfaces, uh, name, uh, static. Uh, mine is going to be on the, the 192.168.1.10. You don't have to. You could be, you know, whatever your network segments are and stuff like that, you can put that in there. And even if you have the wrong stuff, I've actually seen it work. Um, so basically this is just uh, so that it can set up and go through its initial uh, uh, part of that. Here is your actual host name, which you want this to be called once it's uh, created. And then also, as I mentioned, your network information here. Uh, the next file that you're going to be interested in or to create uh, is, clear the screen here, is the user data. So let me cat that out. Um, basically, it's going to be, you know, your password list, EC2 user, password is going to be Amazon. Please make your password more than this. Like I said, this is for lab environment and I blow these away all the time. Um, but if, you know, for the security conscious, because I constantly get bombarded with the uh, secure, not, you know, setting up secure stuff, make this a hard password. Um, and then here we also have the uh, part to disable the uh, cloud config uh, part of the networking. So every time after first boot, it doesn't redo that uh, cloud in it afterwards. Um, so once we have these two uh, directories created in our seed config, we're actually going to create an ISO. Uh, that ISO, uh, you know, if you're following the Amazon, you can make it seed.iso. You can make it whatever you want um, for the most part here. Uh, so once that's saved, we've got the user data. We've also got the metadata. What we're going to do now is uh, actually create the C ISO or the Amazon ISO is what I am calling it for this as well. And here's the command that you're going to need to, to do for that. Um, so I'll copy that. First, you want to make sure you're in the seed config directory. And then we will run the... Uh, then next we will create the Amazon 2 ISO. And if you list, we can see that now we have an Amazon 2.iso. 
Uh, from here, we're actually going to need to move this ISO into a location that we store our ISOs within uh, Proxmox. So let's go to our Proxmox. And once we're logged in here, we can actually go to our storage and we can see where uh, things are stored uh, within. Okay, so where we want to uh, store this is actually in the ISO directory uh, on our local PVE, at least on my instance. It may be different for yours. Um, so we need to make sure that we copy that ISO into the proper location. Um, so what we'll do here is just clear the screen real quick. Okay, once the ISO is created, we're going to want to move that to our local storage area for ISOs. Um, yours could be different. Uh, it could be on an NFS share or it could be in, in different directories. Um, so what we need to do is move that file. Amazon to ISO to the ISO directory. Um, once we do that, we can actually go back here and we can check our local PVE. And now we've got the Amazon ISO 2 here. So we're good for that part of it. So we know that the ISO there is there. Um, so if we go back to uh, Amazon there, we've got that. Download the Amazon V2 image. We're going to need the KVM image. Um, so you can click on that. And then you can see here's the KVM. Uh, looks like it came out July 22nd. Um, so this is just a regular... You know, copy your link address and do a wget. Um, once we have that side of it, we are going to need to get the uh, QCOW2 image. So we'll just do a wget and then the location of that file. And it's downloading that. Okay, that image has been downloaded. I'm just going to clear the screen here. Now what we need to do is we need to actually move this image to uh, storage that allows the QCOW2 uh, format um, within your uh, Proxmox environment. Uh, for me, I actually have an NFS mount, and in that NFS mount, uh, I do allow that uh, type of image so we'll be able to put it there and then be able to link to it once we start up the VM itself. Uh, so what we need to do is actually move that file to that location and then once that files at that lo location um, we'll be able to do like a scan on it basically that'll that'll show that it shows in that directory and uh, we'll get this set up so that we can actually boot into the image itself. Um, so we will need to move that file. Okay once that file is downloaded we will need that file, but we don't need it now, but we'll need to actually set up the uh, VM first. Um, so what we need to do there is go into a virtual machine and we'll create a new VM and we'll call it Amazon to Linux. Um, next OS. Uh, here we will actually need to uh, select the uh, CD disk image, um, and we are local, and this is the one that we uploaded there, or, or put in that directory, the Amazon 2 ISO. So we've got that type Linux, um, that's what we want selected here, and then the kernel is going to be 5.x and, and 2.6 kernel. Uh, system, that's fine. Hard disk, just leave it as is, this, is, this will just create one. Uh, Notice where your storage is, because that's where we're going to actually put the Amazon image as well. So this is on the NFS. Um, you may have it local. Um, there's, you know, I've got three different locations. I, I'm keeping it on my NFS. And it shows that I've got this QCOW2 format, so it shouldn't be a problem moving that uh, file over there. Uh, CPU, memory's fine. Network here, if you've got a specific VLAN or a different location you want it to be, you can set it up here. I want mine to be actually in VLAN 40, so I'm going to put that information here for now. Um, and confirm. So hit finish here. And then as you can see, it has basically created a Amazon 2 Linux, and its ID is 110. Remember the ID. The ID is pretty important because that's where we're actually going to put that uh, hard drive uh, file that we downloaded from Amazon into there. Um, so let's go back to the command line. 
on the actual box itself. So here we are, we're going to be moving that uh, cute cow to image to mount PVE NFS images. And then here we're moving it into 110 as stated over here in the Amazon 2 Linux. It will take a little bit. It's a pretty good size file. I think 1.2 gig or so. Okay, I would not worry about the uh, ownership for that. Okay, once that's uh, been moved, we're going to actually have to go into the config for that ID of 110. Um, so we're gonna need to change directories. We need to change directories in the Etsy PVE QMU server. Do a list here. We can see all the config files for the ones that I have. And okay, let's do nano 110. And we've got this. And we are going to add an unused disk. Um, ours is 110. disk we're going to make it uh, 110 disk 1 qcow and we're going to exit and then here we're actually going to go into the directory where we copy that file In this directory, we see we've got that. We're going to rename Amazon image to VM-110, same that we did the other one. It's going to be disk1 and then qcow2. So now we've got that second disk that matches the information that we had in the, in the previous one. And then here we're just going to do a QM rescan. And what that's doing is basically just checking those volumes, scanning them, looking at the config files, and putting that information into the configuration. So the, the, the rescan volumes have been completed. So now we will go back into the Proxmox GUI. We'll go into our image. And if we go to hardware, we should see both disks. Here's the one that was created initially. And then here's the one that we set as being unused and renamed from the Amazon one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to detach the initial disk so it becomes unused. I'm going to use unused disk one. I'm going to uh, make that our, our main one. So disk one click add so now we've got disk one is the uh, main hard disk on SCSI zero and we're using the disk one cute cow and it's got 25 gig um, as you can see in our CD-ROM we've got the ISO which is Amazon 2 ISO which we uh, put there in there as well next what we want to do in our options is we want to make sure that it boots to the proper order. We don't want it to do the disk first. We want it to do CD-ROM and then the disk. So let's go in the boot order. Change this around to CD-ROM. It's going to be zero, then network. Okay, all of this seems to be set up properly. So next what we need to do, uh, I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit to make it hopefully a little bit larger, um, is go to here and let's start this VM and check it out from the console. So here we've got our options, Amazon Linux 2. And it's booting into uh, the Amazon Linux 2 image.
Okay, so we are now into our Amazon Linux image that we created. And if you remember, it was EC2 user, and then whatever password you guys had for yours, I made mine cheap and easy and just Amazon. So we're logged in, everything's there, everything looks good. You can check your uh, Etsy Resolve real quick just to make sure you're there. Um, it looks like I'm good at that, that's my information. I'm just gonna try pinging Google real quick. Uh, name or service, not, no. So pinggoogle.com. So we're able to get out to the internet, so everything looks good there. And then I also wanted to show you that if you do yum repo list, if I can spell it right, It will show you the repos it has access to. Um, so it's got the Amazon Core and the Amazon Extra Docker, um, 20,000 something packages. You can also add Apple um, to this as well. So if you need the uh, Apple repositories, you can do that. So once I'm in, I'm actually just going to do a yum update because I want to have the latest and greatest. Uh, I need to reroot. So to sudo yum update. And you can see there's seven packages that it's upgrading. So pretty, pretty current uh, image there. And that's been completed, so we should be good to go. Next, you know, you can, you know, reboot this, use it as is, uh, to create a template so that you can use it again to make multiple ones if you want. But I just thought it was kind of neat to be able to have the Amazon uh, Linux version on your on-prem box your pve proxmox server uh, again my name is matthew bingham hope you enjoyed this i'll be coming out with a lot more videos uh, i've got some 3d printing stuff i'm going to be getting into uh, also the home network how it's set up or the home lab is set up i uh, hope you enjoyed this if you would please like subscribe and uh, i will see you later